Hi, and welcome back to Learn to Code by Writing Space Invaders. We're now on to lesson number 20. In our last lesson, we actually got our aliens exploding, so we actually created that animation effect. And we now have almost a full game where our player ship can move left and right, fire bullets, and hit and kill aliens. But we haven't yet got any scoring system in place, so that's what we're going to work on today. So our last lesson was lesson 19. So we'll load that in and do our usual thing of saving this now as lesson number 20, which is our, our current one. So I'm going to come in here and again just change that to our 20. OK, so we're now going to add in our scoring system. And really what we're going to do is, is you're going to have a go at this yourself um, to begin with. So we're going to talk you through a few bits of it to lead you in the right direction. Okay, So we're going to be drawing a score in the top left corner of the screen. So we're going to need a, a drawing function somewhere down here at the end of our code. So I'm just going down to the end of our code, all the way down here. We've got quite a lot of code these days. And down here, I'm going to create a function called draw scoreboard. and draw scoreboard. So this function, we're going to call that within our tick routine. And that will just simply then, well, initially it's going to just draw the player score up in the top left corner. Um, but eventually it's going to draw all of our um, spare ships in there as well. So along the top of the uh, top of the actual screen. So that's our, our drawing area. And you're going to have to work out what goes in there. But we now have to work out how we're going to keep score. So again, let's come back up to the very top of our listing, all the way up here. And we know that we have a, a number of alien types. So we have two rows of each type of alien. And that is set up in our alien row types array here. And what we're doing is for each of our, our rows, Okay. We are setting its base sprite, and that will then make sure that when we draw these out, we draw the different types of aliens. What we need to do is we need to somehow attach a score to each of these alien types. So I need you to have a think about how we can do that. So remember, each of these alien rows, or alien row types, is an object itself. And it's currently got an, a variable in there which tells us which is the base sprite for it. So have a think about how we can then attach a score to that particular alien. We then to think about how that gets added on to our score. So we're obviously going to need a score somewhere. So we could put it in here. Let's just define a variable for that. So let's just say we're going to have a variable called player score. And that's going to be set to zero at the beginning of our, our code. But somewhere then we need to work out where that um, actually gets updated. And if you think about it, we do have an area in here where we are checking if bullets have been hitting aliens. And that's where we then kill the alien and set off the explosions. So that's probably a good place to look at where we actually add in our um, score. And again, remember when we go through checking collisions, we actually do go through each of the rows and columns of aliens to check individual um, collisions. So at that point, we will actually know which of the rows we are currently dealing with so you should then be able to, if you do it correctly, you should be able to pick up from there what that alien score value is. Okay, so have a think about how it's going to happen. So we need to attach a score to each of these alien row types. We then need to have a look at our check bullet collisions function and see if we can work out how to add those scores on and build up the player score. And then down the very end of our listing, we had that draw scoreboard function, and that's then going to print the score in the top left corner of the screen. 
So have a think about how you're going to do that and have a go. I'll put on the timer and when it's finished, I'll come back and take you through uh, my version of the solution. OK, so see you in a few seconds. OK, so if you manage to get that working, that's brilliant. If, if not, then do follow through with me now and, and we'll go through and see how it's all put together. So uh, I'm going to start off with our drawing function so we can actually see if anything's working or not. So let's go down very, very bottom of the screen, which is down here. So we have our function for uh, drawing our scoreboard. And we're simply just going to do a, a print statement. So we're going to say print, and I'm going to get the print, so score, and our colon. Remember, the dot double full stop is the um, what we, we call a concatenation operator, so it actually sticks two bits of strings together. So we had a variable called player score. So that will then print score, and then whatever number is held in player score. And we want to print that at position 0, 0 on the screen, which is the top left corner. So for this to show on screen then, we have to make sure that this function, uh, draw, player, draw scoreboard, is called within our tick function. So let's just copy that, and then let's jump up to our tick function. And we know this is where we do all of our drawing. So at the very end of this then, we're going to draw in our scoreboard. So we should now be able to run that and have a score appearing up on the top uh, left hand corner. Now obviously at the moment our aliens start off in that top left corner, so that's something we're going to have to fix in a second. But let's go through and um, get this score adding up first and then we'll fix the aliens in uh, after that. So back into our code. So we know then that we need to have in our alien row types, <clears throat> we need to somehow attach a score to each of these rows. So let's have a look at adding that in. So we know that each of these alien row types, okay, so remember we've got an alien row types array and element one then, that tells us information about our row one of aliens. And we're saying here that it's using the base sprite number of 16. And if we come in here, again, that is our our ready, red, reds, red, red aliens sitting up there. Okay, so back into our code. So it makes sense then that if this gives us information about this particular row, we should be able to attach a score to that as well. So let me just go into the smaller font size. And we can then um, come in here and set a score that variable for that as well. So just coming after that, oh, let me just come in here. So coming after that, we can then say the score for this row is going to be equal to, uh, and whatever you want to make it. So I'm, I'm going to make my top aliens worth 50. So there's two rows of these top aliens. So we're going to add a score for the second row, which is going to be 50 as well. The next row down, then, they're going to score 25. And the final row then are going to score 10. So we now have each of our alien row types. It tells us the sprite it uses plus its value when it gets hit. So let's go down and check where we're doing that. So we said that when we come through doing our updates, at this point here, this function here, is the one that detects when an alien has been hit by a bullet. So obviously that's when we need to go and do our scoring. So we're going to do, look at check bullet collisions. And we know in here that at this point we have a hit. So this is where our alien has been hit. Okay. So we see there that our alien row column um, alive, we set that to false, we deactivate our bullet and we then create this explosion. 
But we know then that this particular alien, we know that it is in rho. Well, well the rho it's in is given by this variable rho. So that's how we're, what we're going to use to pick out our actual um, score value. So in here, we want to update our player score. So player score, we're going to add the value of this alien onto it. So player score plus, and now we have to work out what the value is. So we know it's in row given by this value here, but we need to work out how we get that. So I've, I've actually forgotten what, the, what we called it. Okay, so we have our alien row types array. We're then going to use the index row to get the particular row we want. That will then give us this object. And from that object, we want to extract the score. So it's alien row types is the array. So let's copy that. And let's go back to our check bullet collisions function. Okay. So we want to add on our alien row types array. The index for that is row. That will then give us an object. And we then want to grab hold of the score from that. So that should now, when an alien gets hit, it should pick out its value from our alien row types array and add that onto the player score. And really, that, that should be it. So let's run that and see what happens. So we're going through, and as we shoot aliens, we should see our score increasing. And we now have the ability to build up our score as we shoot aliens. Okay, and, and that is all we need to do. So if you did manage to get that, that's brilliant. Well done, that, that's, that's, you're starting to learn all the coding techniques. If you didn't manage to get it, have a look through how we did it and see if you can then just work out for yourselves how, where you went wrong and maybe fix your own version of the code. Okay, so that's our, our score in place. We did say then, actually if I run that again, that our aliens do walk behind that score value. So we really do need to make sure that they don't do that. So we know that that bit of text is about, is about six pixels high. So we need to make sure that our aliens start off six pixels lower than they do at the moment. So let's go back into our code and see where that happens. So we know that our alien array is initialized in our function called init aliens. So if we go there, let me drop back to our smaller, our bigger font size. So this is where we initialize all of our aliens. And we can see here we're doing our, our row and column counters. And we set the aliens up at a certain position. This line here sets the Y value for our aliens. And we can see there that when we're in row number one, so, so row will be one, so this will be just zero plus the vertical spacing, times the vertical spacing, which of course will give us um, our Y value for our top row being zero. So what we would need to do is we need to have a little offset set in there. So we want to have our alien, oh, alien top offset added into that Y value. And what that will do is if, if we put a value in here, then that will then drop the alien array down by that number of pixels. So we obviously need to set that up somewhere. So if I copy that variable name, and if we then go up to the top of our code, and have a look at our alien stuff. So we see here, this is where we set up all of our alien um, values. So perhaps after we do the spacing, we should set up our alien top offset. And let's set that to eight pixels and, and see what that looks like. Again, by, by using a variable and not just typing the number straight in, we can now 
make this ch make one change here and then anywhere where we are using this value will automatically get updated okay so tr try and avoid typing numbers directly into your code um, if, if possible okay so let's have a look and see if that actually does it for us so let's control r and run that and there we have our aliens starting off eight pixels lower than before so they don't then go behind our scoreboard okay so that's this lesson's um, coding done. So make, let's make sure that we save our work. So again, I've already saved it as lesson number 20. So I'm just gonna save it again here. And I will see you in the next lesson. See you soon, bye. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.